It is Wednesday, November 3rd in the NBA. We have 11 games on the slate, and my best bets and free picks are coming your way. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Call on Our Shot, and let's do a victory lap after yesterday. A great day, 5-2, and two, plus 2.21 units. We're going to try to keep it rolling. That was our sixth winning day, day out of the last seven days. You saw us cash Rudy Gobert's overs, De'Aaron Fox's unders, even Grayson Allen under one and a half assists, because Grayson Allen has as many assists as you and I, a big goose egg. Now, the two losses, Luka Doncic over and rebounds. What can you do about it? Tyler a hero over in rebounds and assists, which we added on Twitter. So make sure you follow us at Call on Our Shot. Just didn't feel like passing, scoring a ton of points. But we're going to get after it today. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We are at less than 100 subscribers away from 12,000. If we hit 12,000 today, we're doing a parlay giveaway tomorrow. So want to watch out for that. Also, click the like button. Comment your best bet down below because you could end up like this guy. Got to get the bag. Handed out a free winner to you guys yesterday. Under 52 and a half PRAs for Giannis. And he's been handing out winners pretty frequently in the comment section, not only in the comment section, but also in the Discord. So make sure you go check out that. Also, liking and commenting the video really helps us boost the channel, boost the videos on, in, on YouTube. So we appreciate it in advance if you guys can do those two things. Let's get this show started. Last note, podcast live at 10 a.m. Also, I guarantee you we'll add some more players plays on Twitter. So make sure you follow us at Call on Our Shot. We passed 4,000 followers yesterday. We appreciate you guys. Let's get it started with my best bet. OG Ananobi, over 27 and a half PRAs, minus 120 on Caesars. Yeah, OG Ananobi, you know, we, he wronged us a couple couple games ago when we picked his over and he shot 19 times, but then hit his over 18 and a half points. But today, Scotty Barnes, who we love on this channel, we've cashed his bets. Scotty Barnes will remain out with, I believe, a sprained thumb. And that should be an even more shots for Ananobi. Last game without Barnes, this man went out and dropped 36 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists on my New York Knicks. He was unreal. They couldn't stop him. And I don't necessarily expect him to drop 36 points tonight. Although, would be nice. Would be an easy, no-sweat bet. But I do expect him to exceed 20-plus shots tonight. This is a guy that has already been shooting 17 to 20 times a night. And now he gets Scotty Barnes out, who was taking up, I don't know, 14 to 17 shots a night. So that will be even more. Now, the Wizards are not a team that necessarily just scares me defensively. They're starting Kyle Kuzma at the four, and that will likely be the guy who guards OG Ananobi. So whoop de doo I'm not afraid of Kyle Kuzma too much. And they're allowing a lot of rebounds to opposing small forwards and power forwards because they're not really a big team. Big team interiorly. Now, that's not even a word, but these two teams played earlier this season. Ananobi did not shoot the ball well, but what I did find confident, he had 10 rebounds and one assist, which is well above his overs that are today. Now, we shot three for 17, so of course, he's probably only scored 11 points, but I think he shoots much better today, and I think he has a much better game, so we'll lock him in. Over 27 and a half PRAs, minus 120. Let's see if we can cash our best bet for two straight days. Let's move on to some spreads and over unders. We're taking the Nets, minus five, minus 110 on FanDuel, taking on the Atlanta Hawks. Both these two teams sitting at four and three. Not necessarily the best, not necessarily the worst out of the gate. But if the Hawks could play every single game at home, they'd probably be the number one seed in the East. Unfortunately, sorry Hawks fans, you guys can't play the, be the number one seed. And because you don't play every game at home, that's not possible. They are one and three on the road. And more importantly, and their only win coming against a bad Pelican squad, more importantly, 0 and four against the spread. Let's see if they can make it 0 and five. These two teams, I haven't really played each other in a long time. The last time they played January 2021, it was right after the Harden deal. So they did have the big three active, but those guys had no chemistry together. Both teams clearly different from then. And you look at it, the Hawks have a ton of people on the injury report. They got John Collins, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Trey, even Trey Young all on the injury report. I do expect all those three guys to play, but if they don't, hey, that will be even better value for the Nets minus five. I think the Nets currently on a two-game winning streak, kind of looking to get back into their groove. James Harden playing a little bit better. And this is their final game before they go on a six-game road streak. So they're going to play six straight games on the road after this one. I think they want to end this game with a win and their home, home, and home span with a little a win and then go on the road and deal with those games there. So we'll lock them in. Moving on to an over-under, Warriors Hornets. I'm taking the over, 225 points, minus 112 on Barstool. Both these two teams play super fast. I mean, if you're a fan of either of them, congrats, because these two teams, they, they're one of the two of the most fun teams to watch in the NBA. Currently, Warriors rank fifth in pace, and the Hornets not far behind them. They're currently ranking eighth. And the Hornets also boast the 28th highest defensive rating in the NBA, or as we say, the third worst in the NBA. And the Warriors are a better defensive team, but I do think LaMelo Ball and this offense can really put up points against this Warriors squad. Now, they have Terry Rozier back shooting pretty well, and that's an added asset on offense. And the Warriors team, in my opinion, doesn't have a lot of size down low. You got guys like Miles Bridges, LaMelo Ball, even Terry Rozier, and company, I all drive to the rim, and I don't think they'll have a lot of 
a lot of bodies down there to deter him. I'm not scared of Kevon Looney if I'm going into the paint. Draymond Green, very good defender, but obviously undersized. So if you look at it over the last four matchups with Stephen Curry in the lineup for the Warriors, here's their combined scores. 251, 227, 231, and 237. Cashing it in four straight games. The Hornets, I've combined for 223 points with teams that don't even buy business scoring that many points, like the Cavaliers, 231 versus the Magic. Both these two teams... Not clearly the offensive skill power, skill power or caliber of the Warriors offense. So I'll take the over in this spot. Moving on to another spread or really a money line pick. Taking my New York Knicks plus 105 money line. Taking on the Pacers. They're coming off a disappointing loss last game against the Raptors. When, like I said, OG Ananobi had a field day. I think they bounce back and win this one outright. The Pacers currently just sitting at 2-6. and six. We still don't know if Malcolm Brogdon, their floor general, will be active today. And I think that could make a difference, but I would still take the Knicks regardless of if he's playing or not. Pacers defense, fair. Very lackluster, and the Knicks offense has been better than anticipated this season. They've not necessarily, you know, they're shooting pretty well. Evan Fournier, Kemba Walker, shout out to Kemba watching the videos, shout out to him. Um, but they've been shooting the ball pretty well, and I think they bounce back here. RJ Barrett has played notoriously well versus Indiana Pacers team, and he's been playing surprisingly well the last two games. Stay tuned for my call and my shot. Pacers defense, like I said, not very good. And under Tom Thibodeau, the last two seasons, Knicks are 21 and 14 against the spread after a loss. The third best in the league, cashing at 60% of the time. The Knicks currently 3 and 0 on the road. I think they move the 4 and 0, and I will lock them in. Now let's move on to some player props. We're talking about Cole Anthony, over 10 and a half rebounds plus assists, minus 128. Cole Anthony, been very superb this season. We've cashed some bets with him, and we're going to cash another one here. Here's his game log, rebounds and assists wise 17, 13, 10, 11, 14, 24. He's cashed this easily in four and five of the last six games. And today they get a Celtics team that's allowing a ton of rebounds to opposing guards and big men. Mainly because you see Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum just staying out on the ice outside, not passing the ball. That's what Marcus Smart said, not me. Now, the Celtics have a lot of players like Spencer Dinwiddie, Lamella Ball, Fred Van Vliet, Kemba Walker, all to hit this over and do a lot of, do a lot of the damage with rebounds alone. Lonzo and Caruso both finish one or two rebounds and assists short. And if you don't have rebounds and assists, I probably lean towards his, I don't know, it's hard to really pick one for this one. His PRA line's pretty good too. Now, like Marcus Smart said, these two got, they got Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum both standing out on the outside, shooting a lot of shots. Well, luckily, Cole Anthony likely won't be guarding either of those two guys. Last season, Cole Anthony combined for seven and nine combined rebounds and assists for this versus the Celtics team. He didn't have nearly the usage rate that he will have today. Like I said, Celtics currently 26th in defensive rating, so I like his PRA side as well if you don't have rebounds and assists. Speaking of another Anthony, though, Anthony Edwards are taking his over. Five and a half rebounds, minus 120 on Caesars. Have to keep taking this line at five and a half. He's six for six on the season, currently averaging eight rebounds per game. He's cleared this, and he cleared this line in eight of the final 12 games last season when he finally got his footing in the NBA. Clippers allow the most rebounds per game to opposing teams. They've currently allowed five or more players to have six plus rebounds. So five players per team to hit this over in five of their six games this season. So you'd think if some if five players are going to hit the over on the Timberwolves, Ant, Anthony Edwards, Ant-Man, it's got to be one of them. He also hit this over in his final game versus the Clippers last year. I don't think he'll draw the Paul George matchup. That might be Jaden McDaniels. So I'll take the over five and a half rebounds until it hurts us. Moving on to an under, Derek White, under 18 and a half points plus rebounds, minus 115 on FanDuel. We cashed this bet on Monday and we're back for more. Now, Derek White, he's the starting shooting guard for the Spurs and personally, if you don't have points plus rebounds, I'd probably consider either his under and rebounds or points alone. I wouldn't do PRAs because he's putting up a good amount of assists. But here are White's points plus rebounds lines the last six games. 15, 19, 10, 12, 16, and 18. So he's gone under in five of six games, one of those being a 10 point and rebound effort versus the Mavericks, who they will be playing today. White has also two or less rebounds in five of his last six games. And speaking more on the Mavericks, he's gone under in five, six of the last seven games versus the Mavericks. This one, I don't expect, the only game he won over versus the Mavericks in those seven games was a game he had seven rebounds, which he has not been doing very well on the rebound department recently this season so I find that very unlikely to see him score hit seven rebounds today so give me this under now moving on to another Orlando Magic player taking his over Wendell Carter Jr. over eight and a half rebounds minus 106 fan duel probably not the guy you expected us to be betting on today and maybe you, you don't know half these players which I try to try to say their team but he's starting point, point power forward slash center for the Orlando Magic. Wendell Carter Jr. hit this over in six of eight games so far. Two misses. He played just 16 and 18 minutes. Now, obviously, he's probably not going to hit an over if you feel only playing 16 or 18 minutes, but the other six games, he played over 30 minutes and cashed this very easily. 
and he's been on a tear recently. And you look, and he's been doing it against good rebounding teams like the Heat and the Knicks. Well, a good rebounding team, that is not the Celtics. They currently are giving up 28 rebounds per game to opposing power forwards and centers. And they're both good. They're likely going to be starting Al Horford and Robert Williams a lot. Play them each over 25 to 30 minutes each. So that means a lot of big men minutes for the Orlando Magic. That means more minutes for Wendell Carter Jr. Celtics have allowed, on average, two players, sometimes even three, to hit this over per game, and I think you got a guy like Wendell Carter Jr. playing super well, and I think he gets over eight and a half rebounds. If you want to sprinkle a little bit on the double-double, he's been doing pretty well there too. So I like Wendell Carter Jr. tonight, and I think he has a big game. Over eight and a half rebounds, we're locking it in. Moving on to call in my shot time. We've been a little bit, you know, give and take. I wish I took Jalen Green yesterday. He had a big game like I had expected him to have one coming up, but we're taking RJ Barrett, 25 plus points, plus 470. Ronak will love this one if he's watching the video. Not only has RJ Barrett done this in back-to-back -back games, and he scored 27 and 35 points, shooting 11 of 17 from three. Today, he gets to play a Pacers team that he's absolutely destroyed. I don't know what he, what they put in the water in Indiana, but he just goes absolutely off on them. In his last three matchups against them, he's at 24, 25, and 26 points. That's a, There's a lot of mouths to feed on this Knicks offense, but if RJ Barrett gets it going and he's shooting the ball pretty well, guarantee you he has a pretty good chance of hitting this over, plus 470. Great odds. Don't put a full unit on it, but sprinkle a little bit, a quarter of a unit. That's fine. I like it. And I'll take it at plus 470 value. Now, though, that will do it. That'll recap Wednesday's slate. Like I said, follow us on Twitter at Call on Our Shot. We will likely have some more plays as the day goes on. We appreciate you guys. Click that like button. Click comment your best bet down below. Maybe we'll get shouted out in tomorrow's video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.